Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for what I hope for you guys has been a terrific Tuesday to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update and we're going to be continuing um, to look at the situation, to assess the situation for the cryptocurrency market and everything surrounding it. We're going to definitely be diving into the Bitcoin chart. I will come cover a number of altcoins that I'm currently looking at at the moment. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin dominance because one of the worst things about potentially me being right in my thesis that I think the cryptocurrency market is uh, potentially set for more downside is the fact that I believe Bitcoin maxes are going to get their moment in the sun and we're actually going to see Bitcoin dominance move to the upside. Um, and this, of course, is going to reflect the situation. It's kind of another confirming point that I'm raising to my thesis on the fact that I think actually, look, crypto is still set for a bit more downside given everything that's going on at the moment. Because what we will see is we will see Bitcoin dominance go up as people sell altcoins looking for more of a safer um, or less volatile and higher beta asset within the crypto space. And I think this is going to lead to Bitcoin dominance on the rise. We're going to be pulling up a number of things. Talking, of course, about we've got the uh, meeting this week. I believe it's on Thursday. Are the markets essentially rallying into this ready for a sell off? I think that is a potential. Um, play. Um, I'm already short altcoins. I don't think that this rally is going to be very long lived. If it is, I'll be stopped out. That's fair, a fair play. You know, trading the market is extremely risky, certainly with any kind of leverage, even if it's a small amount. Um, and my short position is only really to cover my long position. We've spoke about that and how we're hedging our bets um, in regards to opening shorts with a little bit of leverage to cover my longer you know, huddle pot so that whether the market goes up or down, I'm in profits either way. Uh, Australian hikes its interest rates for the first time in more than a decade. You know, it's, the reason we pay so much attention to the Fed, it's often the uh, tone setter or the pace setter for the economy um, generally. And I want to pull this tweet up really to start things off. And we're going to talk about on-chain analytics. They've somewhat died. Um, and what I mean by that is the on-chain analytics, yes, it's a very good way to look at who's holding Bitcoin, what the health of the network and everything associated with it. Um, but it's not the accurate price predictor that it once was. And I think 2021 was a year of learning for all of us. And it really highlighted that on-chain analytics has less of a degree of accuracy in terms of dictating what the price is going to do surrounding that data than it once did. And we'll pull up Will's tweet here. Will is a great on-chain ana analyst, um, somebody that I certainly look to, his Twitter for on-chain stuff um and then we'll talk about a number of other things like the sec so we, we've got a lot to cover as always guys there's just so much i can share with you right now the markets were somewhat, somewhat rallying yesterday um it's a very annoying crab like market it's very trader driven you've still got your dip buyers coming in and then your traders will get on the back of that to the to the long side and that's why you're seeing the kind of price movement you're seeing but it, it's weak rallies to say the best and i think this is rallying into the fed meeting where they're going to continue to set the pace and i think it's going to be an aggressive pace that we're moving towards um, and I think when you couple that with where we didn't have the UK stock exchange open yesterday, um, but we had the traditional equity market, which we can pull up as we're going through this video, you know, it, it wasn't really a strong start. And, and typically where we are, not just the equity market actually looks like a lot of altcoins like Luna. And what I mean by that is where Luna currently is in terms of this structure here. It's got a similar top to what Luna has, um, the equity market. But let's let's get in, guys. I've waffled on for way too long, uh, and let's talk about the cryptocurrency market. So this is where we're currently at in our long-term view. We pulled up the Bitcoin long-term regression bands here. This is on a daily. We'll switch it to the three daily. This doesn't fill me with confidence that we're going to see a move to the upside. We could do. That's fair enough. I'm hedged either way. Um, but ultimately, you know, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in this. Not only holding, but you know, then moving to the upside. I think this is more likely to break. I think the ads, I think the odds are stacked against um, the price of Bitcoin flourishing in this environment. That, that That's my truthful thesis. You know, I'm super bullish on the crypto space. I think it's going to come back in a huge way. And I think we're going to see tens of trillions moving forwards in terms of a market cap. But just like anything that's growing, you know, there's teething issues, there's growing pains, and, and, and this is all part of it. And right now, crypto is very much just swept up in the kind of macro landscape to everything. But we've covered this in somewhat extensive detail. Uh, and what I actually want to do is switch down the timeframes um, and look at this structure here, potentially, which I am looking at. And I think you could be into some sort of head and shoulders here with this area being your neckline that you are now trading um, 
you know, at basically. And I think a break of this would be quite uh, momentumful. And also, when you look at Bitcoin, you know, generally in this structure, and we will remove everything for the sake of this, it, it's not the most, it's not the prettiest of structures, if you ask me. Um, you're kind of broadening out here. We'll take it off log. It might make things, but we'll leave it on log. You're kind of broadening. And this isn't really what I want to see. You know, I think this could be... Um, my, my likely scenario here is that Bitcoin goes lower, and that's going to, of course, lead your altcoins to to follow along. And in fact, talking about Bitcoin dominance now, leading into Bitcoin dominance, you know, this looks like it could break to the upside. This is what I'm looking at, and we'll get off the monthly time frame. Bitcoin dominance over time, I think, is going to continue to trend downwards, just because, you know, I think the Bitcoin maxi argument argument is extremely stupid. I think that Bitcoin is uh, an amazing bit of technology, and and far more amazing than I think people realise it is, and just how revolutionary its properties are. However, I am a believer that it, you know, being a Bitcoin maximalist is like being a first technology, a first computer maximalist. It, it just doesn't make sense when you have a smartphone in your pocket most of you that can do thousands of times the or if not millions of times the computing power that the first computer did um, and this is what i'm looking at we'll probably need a little bit more retail on the chart here this kind of a structure some sort of a falling wedge that you're showing strength to the upside of already you're touching it you're giving it a little kiss and then you're probably going to break forward and i think that's going to be on a downward cryptocurrency market generally the price is going to move down i think people are going to look to bitcoin for stability and that's one of the worst things about me potentially being right in the direction that i think this is going is that your bitcoin maxis get their moment in the sun even though i think you know i think bitcoin maximalists the majority of them don't even believe what they're talking about they've just built careers off of um, being a bitcoin maximalist and 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 refusing to look at anything else um with any kind of credibility and, and now they're kind of stuck in the positions that they're in and i want to pull this tweeter from the market sniper which was a very interesting one the market sniper by the way if you're not already following the guys francis um he's got the market sniper and the crypto sniper somebody i have a lot of respect for he's essentially comparing bitcoin here with the japanese yen now the japanese yen is the um weakest typically of currencies given their setup very high debted um, very low producer of commodities, a number of other things. Bitcoin even taken against the weakest major currency of the year. Still cannot provide a bullish outlook. Ascending megaphone bear pole risk off event beware. And that's what we're talking about here, guys. We're talking about just be cautious. My out, my overall outlook for the cryptocurrency market, short term is caution. Long term is huge amounts of optimism. I don't think this tech goes anywhere. And I actually think that it's... Um, you know, the, when I and, I and I speak to, I've got interviews lined up all today and I've got uh, meetings. I speak to a lot of people who are actually building on top of the crypto space. And it's amazing what's going on here. Revolutionary in actual fact, in many respects. Um, and that's something always important to pay attention to. But understanding that the price right now is driven by the macro and this is what we're looking at um, does give me somewhat cause for concern. I think it's not just Bitcoin that I have cause for concern for. Of course, we've spoke about Luna. Luna is going to be my favorite short. I think Luna, the only saving grace they have is the Luna Foundation, has probably the most downside out of all altcoins. So if you look at where it is, this is, of course, your um, December rally. Um, and then, you know, it's done very well. It's not sold off as much. And I think that could come as the sentiment sort of turns to to, to people going, okay, well, this market's going down. Um, and that's also going to be coinciding with the equity market and everything. You know, Rune is another one that we like the look of. It's been stubborn. I put a lot of my trades on over the weekend and they've been kind of moving up and down, not really doing anything, but I'm happy to hold them if we do get that initial break, but I'll get stopped out well before I get liquidated if we do see a move to the upside. And, and, and to be honest, guys, I'm comfortable with either situation. And that's what I'm trying to be. You know, I, I, I'm bullish on crypto long term, um, but I, I don't really try and get into the whole bullish bearish thing. I just deal with what the markets are giving me on on, a, on any given um, day. And, you know, you've got the total cryptocurrency market cap, you've got the total two, and you've got the total three, which looks even weaker. Um, and, and this is what, you know, I think is coming. And we've still got the DXY, which is another side of the story that's still showing strength, having a bit of a rest, very key level where it's currently at. But if this continues to push higher, and this could be on the back end of a number of things that we've spoken about, I think this is going to lead to more downside for the cryptocurrency market. Let's bring up this tweet from Will Clement. Very interesting dynamic going on on chain right now. Long-term hodlers cost basis is dropping at the fastest rate in history. While their holdings are flat slash grinding up slightly, 
This suggests an equilibrium of top buyers selling to other long-term hodlers or some potential wash trading. So wash trading, I think, is likely. Uh, and and on-chain analytics has been, for the past while, it's been you know a huge tool that I've personally used to help me navigate these markets. How does the on-chain analytics look? Okay, well, when this sort of signal's flashed on the on-chain, the price has done this and that and the other. That's really been, a lot of that is no longer the case moving forwards. And on-chain analytics is discorrelated with the cryptocurrency market at the moment. And the main reason being um, is simple, really, to be honest with you. It's because, um, you know, the market isn't moved from on-chain. The market is moved from everything going on now around us and your on-chain analytics have a lot less of a degree you know this market is more mature we all wanted institutions we all wanted big players yeah we didn't get the sort of volume that we are eventually going to see but we certainly got a lot of them stepping into the market that means that the market acts like a market now um, it doesn't just dictate um crypto doesn't set its own rhythm you know the, the, the overall market is really the dictator and driver of um the crypto space currently so to recap, guys, Bitcoin dominance things on the rise. I still have a thesis that we're going to go lower. This is not somewhere where I'd be very comfortable. I certainly wouldn't open any long positions here um, other than spot positions. You know, I do have still some cryptos that I DCA into. Um, and that's going to be something that I do for the next five to 10 years, if not longer, hopefully longer, um, because I believe in them in the long term. But short term, I am expecting more downside. The good news is we do come out the back end of this at some point. When that will be um, is really anybody's guess right now. And it has a lot to do with the Fed the current monetary policy and everything going on in the world and the kind of conditions that it causes for people. Because, I I mean, we spoke yesterday about how mortgage applications were down like 71% in the past week or so. The economy is slowing down. And I think we're not at that pain point yet in the economy that we potentially could be moving to with the Fed upping interest rate hikes. And my real question is, okay, well, when do we get to that pain point? And what, does that, what, what kind of effect does that have on markets? And I think when you have people having to choose between their food shopping, their electricity bills, their car bills, their house payments, and their stock or crypto portfolio, I think it's a no-brainer for most people. They're going to um, liquidate to, um, to, to to make payments where they're due. And I think if we continue in the environment that we're on, where we continue to see rising inflation, we continue to see the Fed tightening and putting pressure on everybody and making things more expensive, then that may be something we're moving towards. But we will keep you up to date on this channel 100%, guys. If you have enjoyed this content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. Go and follow me on Twitter, at Real All In Crypto. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next YouTube video. Have a fantastic Tuesday, guys.